Welcome to another episode of Bass and Brass Outdoors. Today we're going to be doing a unboxing slash install slash review of the Amazon Cold Air Intake for a 2010 Silverado 1500. Now I ordered two of these. That's why it's such a big box. Or one for my truck, one for my dad's truck. Uh, he has the 5.3 liter. I have the 4.8 liter. Um, but this will work with both. It'll also work with the 5.8 liter and the 6.0 liter. It'll work with many years, like 2007 to 2014 or something like that. And I'll have a link of it, of the exact one down in the description. But, uh, yeah, let's open it up. Oh, great. More boxes. Yo. It looks like someone stepped on it. Look at that. It looks like a footprint. What the hell? So this does come with the heat shield. It comes with the filter. But uh, I'm going to run this filter for maybe a couple days. Before I go buy a Canon filter. Which which are some of the best filters. But has all your gasket to put around the heat shield. It has 3 inch. This is a 3 inch silver or chrome pipe. Uh, you can paint these if you want. I think I might do a little. I think I might paint it white, but I don't know. Um, it comes with your clamping. Comes with all of the brackets to mount your heat shield onto your truck. So just replace the stock one. As I said, the three-inch pipe. It, it comes with the all the sensor plugins and whatnot that you need but this is going to give you better airflow than the stock version it'll give you keep your engine running cooler it will give you better throttle response may give you an increase in horsepower and torque and it'll also increase your MPGs with here's the filter um, like I said I'm probably not going to run it for long each year So it's painted black, pretty thin, thin piece of metal, not, and I have the exact same thing in the second box right here, uh, which I won't show you that of course, and next I'll show y'all taking off the old filter, the old intake, and then I'll put this one on. Okay, so I've removed the, the cover. Off of the uh, engine here, and uh, I've loosened, I've unloosened this screw for this clamp. So basically, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take off this oil intake. Uh, also, you have to remove this clip right here. Um, you press this little thing right here, and it just comes off. And you push, put that to the side. You're gonna need that later. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna unloosen this all the way. I'm gonna unloosen this on all the way. And then I'm going to try to remove the intake. This is the 5.3 liter engine. So right here, there's this connector that goes into the intake. So you make sure you uh, disconnect that, kind of put that off to the side. I've got this loose. So it's kind of free right now. And I'm going to free up this part right here. It kind of sits in there. Then uh, I'll see. Also right here, we kind of hard to tell. There's a little clamp right there that kind of holds it on. You're going to have to kind of just pry it free. So I've, I've undone this right here, as you can tell. The, the thing, the uh, intake is free from the throttle body. And now, I've got to worry about this right here. As you can see, it just kind of snaps on. I'm going to see if I can stick my screwdriver in there and pry it. Alright, so, give me a little trouble, but eventually I got it. 
So now I'm just gonna remove it after. So here we go, here's the old part of the intake. As you can tell, a lot of little nooks and crannies for all that air to go into. And this new system is gonna be one straight pipe. Keep the airflow to a maximum. Um, now this right here, you're gonna wanna be careful with, make sure you don't damage it. You will have to remove it with a some type of special screwdriver. Uh, I got one of those, so you will have to remove it, but don't lose those screws. Uh, try not to lose those screws at least. It does, the kit that I bought does come with new screws, but uh, I'm gonna use the stock ones just in case. So this, this box right here that the filter is in, it just kind of clamps on there. So if you give it a little force, it will come off and then just remove it. So there you go. There's the air filter box. And as you can see, there's the filter. It's a little dirty. Probably hasn't been changed in a long, long time. Um, so, you know, we can kind of keep this if we want. Uh, but, or we might sell it. But make sure you uh, keep this and uh, unscrew it. And don't break it because you will have to buy another one. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to remove these four bolts. So what I did was I loosened them up with the ratchet set. Then I'm going to get my little ratchet screwdriver thing, whatever you want to call it, and just undo them the rest of the way. You can, you don't have to save these, but you can if you want. Um, this whole plate won't be needed for the new intake that you buy. So you can do whatever you want with it, like I said, but we might keep it just in case. You never know if something goes wrong, you know, uh, you can always sell them. So once you remove them, you can just remove this plate, do whatever you want with it. Like I So the easiest thing to do first would probably be take, take this stuff right here and start putting some of the rubber housings and stuff. Don't do what I just did. So this one, this clamp right here, you can put on pretty tight and uh, you'll be fine. You really won't have to move it ever again until you're done. And you can make sure it's tight again. So right here is where you're gonna wanna put that little controller sen sensor thing that you're gonna take off the old intake. And right here, it's where you're gonna plug this in. So you want you're gonna wanna get your little hex head and uh, undo these two screws without losing them. So you're gonna wanna take it. You're gonna wanna take it, and you're just gonna wanna line up your screw holes, push it in there. So once you got it tightened down all the way, uh, you'll be good on this, and you won't be you won't be touching this uh, intake tube until you get the brackets and all that set up, and we'll show you that. So as you can see, we've got that rubber uh, guard going all the way around the top that they gave you so you're going to want to fit this bracket just set it down where the old box was with this hole facing the engine you can bend this metal a little bit if you need to um, but you're going to want to make sure that it's pushed up all the way against here and then you're going to what we did is we we use some self-tapping screws, metal screws, and put it through this heat shield into that bracket right there. And then they give you this this L bracket, and you're gonna you're gonna put one side right here, and you're gonna drill a hole right here to hook on the other side, and it's gonna be perfectly fine. You know, you're drilling into very strong parts of the truck, and you know, if you ever want to remove it, it'll be no problem. You just undo the self-tapping screw. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have everything lined up right. 
and we're going to put this right here. So they give you this for the filter. You're going to want to put it from the back side. You're going to take these two black screws right here and put them until they're hand tight. That way this is stationary so you know how to mock up everything so you can drill your holes. So you're going to want to put this rubber piece on up, uh, and put the clamp on. And once you do that you can mark where you want to put the self tapping screws like right here into this metal piece and then later we'll after we do that we'll do it for the L bracket but you're going to want to make sure you have it kind of mocked up because it's going to be way easier to put the screws first and drill the holes first for the screws than to put the to do it vice versa so we had put this heat shield down here mocked it up and we made a mark we had put this L bracket on long side on the heat shield and made a mark where we needed to drill a hole for the self tapping screw and drill a hole so that way we can easily put this then once we put it down like this once we get it in there we'll put that self tapping screw and then we'll put more two more self tapping screws one in each corner right here on that bracket that you see where the old where the old piece was so we got it all put on got the clamps down we drilled pilot holes to be able to put these self tapping screws in because of how thick the metal is one on each side you can't see this one and then we just put the air filter on, did what we had to do, hooked all the little connections up. So we got it running, and I'll show y'all mine later on once we finish buttoning it up. It's been about a week or so, probably about two, since I put on my cold air intake on my truck. Um, here it is. As you can see, I painted it white. Um, I used a heat resistant, a heat rated primer. And then I just use regular white spray paint. See how the filter is kind of messed up. That that was from us installing it. Um, we kind of smashed it in between the hole right there, and it got stuck. So I will be replacing this filter pretty soon with a K&N filter. Um, but in this past week or two, it's ran extremely well. The truck has been getting about 0.5 miles per gallon better sometimes. Um, that I've noticed the throttle response is immediately better on my truck and my dad's truck. It does sound better uh, going down the road, um, like on takeoffs. If you if you accelerate quickly, it sounds extremely better. But overall, it's doing fine the first couple weeks. Um, if you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe uh, for more videos on my truck and stuff like that fishing as well um, also this this will be linked down below in the description so if you want to check it out uh, I'll have it down there thank you